Welcome to Unhinged Magi. Now, I've got a special update for you guys today. Something really interesting happened. We actually had an entire video filmed uh, last week, actually, and we were just about to post it. In fact, like I was making the thumbnail and everything for it. Now, that video is not going to be published anymore, but I'm going to just leave it like unlisted and you guys can actually click on it if you actually go click this link that I'm about to post right now. So you can see the video that was about to go live, but is now not going to. And that video, it, we were basically uh, ripping apart MTG Goldfish because there's, there's several problems that they had with their website that relates to like old cards and old school players and things like that. And we were calling out those issues and it was gonna be an attempt to get MTG Goldfish to actually go fix the problems that they actually had. Well, the craziest thing happened, you know, um, as I was getting ready to post that video today, I looked at the actual um, data on MTG Goldfish again, and sure enough, they actually fixed some of it. They actually, added collector's edition and international collector's edition to the sets that they actually list on their website and they apparently just did it in like the last like week or so so that's actually in my mind that's a, it's a pretty cool thing and um i i wanted to actually like i gotta give props where props are due and props are due here because they did, in my mind, a really cool thing. Now, there's still other problems with the actual site that need to be addressed. But let me just show you guys what I'm actually talking about here. So I'll grab this video and bring it down. So here you can see on MTG Goldfish, you can see all the individual um, formats that they actually post decks from. And you can notice that there is no 93, 94. There's no old school in here. It doesn't exist in the format, right? You can even like zoom in here a bit so you guys can see better. So yeah, there's it's not a part of that format at all. And like also like Penny Penny Dreadful is listed in there, but not old school. And in my mind, that doesn't make any sense because old school is literally the the format that's been driving the prices crazy high on all of these old cards. I mean, people keep saying they think it's like speculators and collectors that are driving these prices up. And of course, yes, that's part of it as well. But there's a lot of people that play old school and most of the cards are not like investment worthy in terms of like, B, you know, graded high grade BGS. Most of the cards are played and those are players that are chasing those. So there's a massive organic demand for these cards and the format that's driving it isn't even in here. And I think that's pretty bad, actually. So before I go to some of the other problems, let me uh, just show, though, um, what you have right here. Scroll back up to the top. This is the collector's edition. And uh, let's see, let's zoom back out to normal. So the collector's edition is actually listed in here now, which is honestly amazing. And here's all the top cards and here's all the prices for them. And notice how they're all listed in order and all the best cards seem to be there. And um, if you click on any individual one of them, like I'll look on this collector's edition Black Lotus, and what you see here on price history, notice that this bar is expanded all the way out and there's no price variation on it. Well, that's literally because they just added it in there. So they don't have that history to like track. So I don't know why, why they didn't have it before. I don't know why they just added it, but congratulations. That's fantastic. Good job, guys, for actually adding that in there. Now, um, to focus on some of the things that are actually problems with it, we need to focus on this next. Now, you'll notice that the, it, back in the collector's edition side here, you'll see that all the like the really big cards are listed. And if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here, there are some cards without prices and like just one like Crusade that has like no price listed. But for the most part, well, that's probably because it's one of those like, you know, Wizards banned cards because whatever. So um, there are lands that are not listed on any price, but generally all the cards in the set are generally listed and their prices are all about the same. So, and these were just added. So one might think that, oh, well, what happens if we look at a set like beta, you know, cause beta has been out since the start of the game and they've been tracking information on it since forever. So here we are, this is now limited edition beta. And when you look in here, okay, well, there's Black Lotus at the top and it's 42,000, but wait, what's this? Mind Twist? Mind Twist goes for more than Black Lotus? 
and they're claiming two hundred and four thousand dollars on on a mind twist. And if we were to even look at this, you know, on a chart like you know, okay, this this doesn't this doesn't make any sense, right? What's going on here? Like all this time throughout history, it's like low, and then now it's suddenly over two hundred thousand dollars. Well, okay, I actually know what the problem is there. The problem actually is that um, I believe MTG Goldfish actually gets a lot of their price data. They get it actually from um, TCG Player. And TCG Player is a collection of a lot of sellers that can list cards for sale at whatever price they want. And for some reason, there's some crazy players out there that are listing a couple specific cards at insane prices. And Beta Mind Twist is one of them. I think there's like one or two guys out there that are listing like several hundred thousand dollars to sell like a Beta Mind Twist, which is just a stupid price. Nobody's going to buy it at that price. It's not a real market price. And then you, if you look right down this list as well, if I minimize myself again here, you've also got what Death Lace here, $22,000, Bad Moon, $28,000, and the rest of the, like the Power Nine are not in here. And... So, so that's one issue that they're completely like missing um, cards off of this list. But the other issue is that the prices are just stupid. In fact, in, to find those missing Power Nine cards, we have to grab and scroll down all the way to the bottom. And what we find down here is we find okay, here's those missing Power Nine cards. Here's the Jet. Here's the Emerald. Here's the Pearl and the Sapphire. Here's the Time Walk. So all these Beta cards are listed without a price whatsoever. And I suspect the reason there is because whatever they're looking at for price data, there hasn't been transactions on it. But, you know, you've got old historical prices. In fact, if we are to actually look at one of these, I'm going to look at the time walk here. Is there, in fact, price data for it? Well, yeah. Look at all this pricing data. So, okay, having a little bit price that's like outdated is one thing. Having nothing listed? I don't know, man. That's... The, this doesn't seem to hold any water. Now, can you figure out what a price on a limited edition beta time walk is? Absolutely you can. There are, in fact, stores that are transacting this card. And you can even go to eBay and you can look at sold auctions and you can see what they're going for there too. So the price data exists to find this stuff. So in my mind, things like this, like cards without any value, it doesn't really have a lot of good justification. I understand why it's probably happening, but the point that needs to be understood is, okay, MTG Goldfish, you're one of the main price tracking things out there, right? The one thing that you can do to really hurt your business model, like hurt everything, is start to have your data get really stale, invalid, stupid, or just totally incorrect. You really need to address this. And these aren't just like tiny little fringe cards like a card that nobody cares about. If nobody cared about a beta black Lotus, it would not be going for $42,000, which actually, by the way, that one's a closer price. People, these are the most expensive cards. They are the halo effect cards. They are the legendary iconic cards. Every magic player after, if they've played for more than like a few years, they've heard of these cards. It's this, these are big ones to, to make sure that you're actually tracking and looking at on a price tracking tool. This is the exact kind of thing you should definitely not be doing. So these issues still need to get addressed. You've got to remove these flippant prices that are clearly wrong. And you've also got to um, get other cards that you have plenty of price tracking data on and get something actually listed for a price. So that still needs to be fixed. And also this issue of not having old school listed as one of the sets that uh, people can post decks from, that's also not acceptable. And there's plenty of tournaments to go from. Uh, Grand Prix uh, Las Vegas, when it was going, they had decks printed. Um, you could also go to the Winter Derby and the Summer Derby, which are probably the biggest old school tournaments that happen online. Like 300 players like attend and play in those. And all the deck lists are posted, so those could be listed. And there's also uh, the Deep Spawners tournaments. There's LobsterCon. There's all these various old school tournaments that are pretty big, pretty publicized with the groups that do it. And all of those could have data collected from them. Yes, it's not DCI tournaments. The 
GP Vegas ones are DCI tournaments. Um, they do collect deck lists on those. There is uh, data. I actually turned in my DCI number to join old school tournaments in, when I went to GP Vegas. So there is data on those, and you could at least list those. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you've it's, it's a big format. It's what drives the prices. It this this needs to get fixed, right? The the individual. Um, I'll just pull this down again so you guys can see. This this needs to get fixed. These old school decks need to get actually listed here. So that's one problem that's still remaining. Then the second problem that's still remaining is these erroneous prices. The third problem that still remains is cards with no price whatsoever. That's got to get fixed. But I got to hand it to you guys. It is definitely cool that you actually put the collector's edition and the international collector's edition in there. So props to you. The video we had all shot is now not going to go live. But like I said, you guys, we linked it up above. You can actually see that video if you want to see what was going to be posted. And uh, yeah, that's it for the update. So everybody give a big thumbs up to MTG Goldfish for making progress. Please urge them to fix these other issues. And uh, stay frosty, my friends. We'll see you later.